you, right? So uh, I, my Spanish is terrible. I'm not going to even try. Uh, my name is Alan Glickenhaus. I am the digital, digital transformation and API business strategist for IBM. So uh, this first session is actually not going to be very technical. So uh, hopefully the rest of the day we'll get a little more technical after this one. But uh, what I do um, in, in my job at IBM is I learn what people are doing and I share what people are doing. And so uh, I do this in a number of ways. I, um, I visit with businesses all around the world. Uh, I'm leaving tonight to go to New Zealand and uh, we'll be meeting with customers there and all different sizes, all different industries. I do one-on-one -on -one, uh, workshops with customers and meetings. I speak at conferences like API Days. I've done API Days, I don't know, a dozen times already. Um, love coming to, to the conferences here. And I write a lot. So in sharing my, uh, what I've learned from people, I hopefully get to speak at conferences like this, but I also um, write because I know that not everybody can attend a conference and you'd like to get some information that uh, we can only share remotely. So I have written articles. Uh, these are the types of categories that I've written about on, on the screen. Uh, with the number of articles that I've written on each topic. So I did the math uh, last night, and it adds up to 139 uh, different articles that I've written or videos. Um, and if you stick to the end of the presentation, I will give you links to every one of them. Okay, so uh, the big takeaway that people love from my presentation is lots of resources that you can go uh, and look at afterward. And if you're having trouble sleeping at night, you can just start reading from the beginning and go right through. Um, so, so, that's, uh, so that's my uh, gift to you. All right, and tonight, uh, today we're going to uh, speak of just a couple of topics uh, within the strategy and governance and best practices area. So, uh, what I wanted to do today was just share some observations of what I'm seeing customers doing. Uh, we'll talk about um, what's better than learning from your own mistakes, and the answer is learning from other people's successes and mistakes, right? So I'm going to share what's working for other companies um, and what's not working for other companies, and hopefully that'll help you do the right thing as you move forward in your own API uh, initiatives. So uh, some of the things I've written about and some of the things I've presented about here at the conferences uh, in whole sessions, we're going to cover in just a slide or two uh, in today's topic. So I've written and, and presented on four common API uh, economy business drivers. What am I seeing that the world is focused on from a value perspective out of APIs? Seven API use case categories, and how do you identify use cases within those categories? And then I'm going to give you some examples of customers and what they've done uh, specifically in these particular areas. So that's where I'll, mostly I want to focus uh, in today's session. Uh, after that, I'm going to do a very quick recap of the seven biggest mistakes that companies make. I presented that as a whole topic in itself at the Amsterdam uh, API Days conference just uh, a month or two ago. Um, and I'm going to do that in one slide uh, here for you today. Um, and, and then I'm going to talk about where I see this going next. And I think you'll probably recognize that as something that many of you are already working on. Uh, and then finally, I'll give you my, uh, my list of resources that you can take home and, uh, and go to sleep with. All right, so uh, let's talk about the four business drivers. So the first business driver, and, and I say first in the sense of I see most companies focusing on this first is speed to market. Um, companies are trying to get things done faster than they ever have before, and this has been the age-old problem. I, I, Vincenzo introduced me, said I've been working for IBM for a long time. Uh, I have. I, I, I've been working for IBM for a very long time. And from the very beginning of my career, the problem has always been that the business wants to do something fast, and IT's answer is 12 months or 18 months or even six months and none of those answers are very good. The, the, the business really, when they say we want to do something, they want it now, and IT can't deliver now. Now is never going to be possible, okay? So, so there's a recognition that uh, we can't change the IT systems that are running our businesses on a daily basis. And, and so how do we deliver now to the business when we can't change IT now? And the answer is APIs, right? So what we do with the APIs is we encapsulate the back-end systems in ways that make the resources available to the business so that they can experiment and try new things and do all the things that they want to do now without having to change the back-end systems. And so this is the first business driver that I'm seeing many businesses focus on for uh, API initiatives. 
The second one is reach. Uh, so we have a set of customers that we're reaching today. They come to our uh, website or they come to our physical location if we have a, a physical location. Um, and, and they're dealing with us. They Google us, they find us, they come do business with us and we love them and that's great. But there's a whole bunch of other people out there that have not found us and we would like to get their business too. So how do we do that? And the answer, as you might guess, is APIs, right? So now what we can do is through APIs, mobile apps, mobile apps obviously, if somebody has your mobile app, they're probably already your customer. The people aren't downloading mobile apps for businesses they don't deal with. But partnering, third party applications, social networks, IoT devices, these are things that we can reach out to, through third parties and get more business. So the example that I like to use in this space is uh, buying a car. So if I want to buy a car or buy a house or buy something big, uh, I don't go to a bank to do that. I go to a car dealership and I buy a car, right? But when I buy a car, I might need a bank loan. So if I'm a bank and I can partner with auto dealerships that could recommend my bank for getting a loan versus my competitor, I can reach out through partnering and get more business. And that's the kind of scenario that we're thinking about here in, in REACH. So I mentioned there are four business drivers that I, I, I uh, think about. Uh, so the first one is speed, the second one is reach, third one is innovation. So new ideas. Businesses are trying to uh, come out with new things that they want to accomplish, um, but they can't afford the time to change the back-end systems and then unchange them if they don't work. So how do I uh, go through a fail-fast kind of a scenario where I can change, try something, see if it doesn't work, throw it away? And so again, that's an API scenario that we can talk about. Um, again, I'm gonna be pressed for time in my half an hour here, so I'm not gonna go into detail on all of these. And then the fourth one is something I call domains. Probably should have picked a better name for this one, but uh, it, it's basically about sharing information across the business. So many businesses have multiple different lines of business or multiple different geographies. Uh, they organize themselves in certain ways that end up creating silos. And these silos work well by themselves, but don't do well at sharing information across the silos. And so again, through APIs, we can share information in a controlled way across the business. So these are the four business drivers that I'm seeing most businesses focus on uh, as they think about API initiatives, if they are thinking about it from a st strategy perspective. Now you might say to me, wait a minute, Alan, there are many more, and, and I might, agree or disagree with that. The most of the other ones that I think about are things like competitive pressures, monetization, right? These kinds of other topics uh, that um, businesses are doing APIs for also exist. I map them into here. If I have competitive pressures, I want to meet those competitive pressures through speed to market and innovation, right? If I want to make money, I think about innovation, I think about re reaching new markets, right? So you can map many of the other business drivers into these four. Uh, I mentioned there are seven use case categories, and I've written about these as well. Uh, this, this page and the next page, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I am already halfway through my topic and, uh, and haven't even gotten to the main part yet. Uh, so these are uh, use cases that I've written about uh, in, in general in the way that I describe them here, where you can think about what kinds of questions should you ask yourself um, if you're trying to do a mobile app and what APIs might you create for your mobile app, or if you're trying to do something with social media or data and analytics. And what I've done in my uh, writings is map this to every industry. So uh, the 39 topics on industry, a lot of them are specific industries and the use cases that you can use in those industries. So, um, so there's four on this page. The other category, just to explain, is things like regulatory requirements, industry standards, auditing, sharing information across the business, these kinds of things. Uh, the next page is partnering, public and composite apps, and, and date devices and IoT. Um, and again, the link at the bottom of this page when you get this content, I've made the content available to Vincenzo so he can uh, publish this. Um, is, is active and that'll get you to an article on four business drivers and seven use cases that breaks out into each one of them. Um, I hope that um, at the end of today, at the end of my session today, uh, I'll be here all day and I'd like to chat with you all and if you have questions on any of these topics, I would love to, to meet with you and discuss that. And if not today, we can follow up uh, afterward. 
So let me get into some customers uh, and what they've done and how they've been successful in this area. So most of the ones I'm going to show you are from Europe, uh, but I did want to uh, include a few that are not from Europe as well. Walmart is just an incredible example of success. Uh, the developers at Walmart have taken a 99% uh, decrease in the amount of time to deliver resources to the developers. So instead of a developer coming to IT, a mobile developer, a web developer, somebody like that, and asking for access to a particular asset, and it taking weeks to do that, uh, or days, five days, that it's now 10 seconds. So just a tremendous result. And Walmart created a video. They didn't tell us ahead of time, but they created a video on, on their success. Uh, so you can link to that and find uh, Walmart talking about this themselves. Reifersen Bank in, in, um, in uh, Austria. Uh, of course, as most of the banks in Europe have had to do, they've had to meet the PSD2 regulatory requirements. Um, so uh, they took a, a view of, well, that's not all we're going to do. And so they created what they call an elevator lab to go out and do more new innovative things. And the, yes, they met the PSD2 regulations, and yes, they had a mobile app, but they also delivered uh, banking uh, solutions for not only Austria, but for other countries in Europe. And they did this. Uh, with a physical on-site location in Austria to man manage their main uh, business, but also then cloud presence uh, on the IBM cloud uh, for all the other countries that they wanted to support. Uh, this is a very interesting one. There's a, a bank in the Nordics um, that has done extremely well with their mobile app. So they've created their own mobile app and they've made a, a very big success of their mobile uh, market. Uh, with this, but then they created a payment API that was less expensive for merchants to use than traditional credit card processing. And so merchants, of course, preferred this payment API than, uh, than credit cards. And so the merchants started to want to use this API. And now the other banks in the Nordics are becoming users of this payment API as well. So they've created a whole new business model, uh, innovation, reaching new markets, reaching new customers through... Um, through their payment API. Yes Bank is a bank in India, um, and many Indian uh, citizens are working in other countries around the world, and they wanted to be able to let them bank as if they're banking at home. And so through partnership arrangements, reaching out to new, uh, uh, new partners, they're able to uh, achieve success in uh, providing home banking for Indian citizens that are living in, in other countries. And so that was a scenario that they, they uh, attacked. One of the things I've written about recently is uh, platforms, ecosystems, and, and marketplaces. And, and there's a great scenario for a, a bank um, that has uh, created a really good marketplace. And, and so, if you're in uh, corporate banking, your customers that you have as corporations are really like partners. There's a trust relationship between the corporate customers and, uh, and, and the bank. But there are all the other things that these corporations need to do, like shipping and, and things like that, that they don't have relationships with every one of these different potential uh, um, suppliers of these different functions. And so the bank created a marketplace and what they do, and, and this is one of the things I wrote about in the article, is they, they provide value by vetting and onboarding the different providers. So it's not only shipping, but they can uh, take shipping and put them in their marketplace, but they can do payroll, they can do other financial products, whatever the things are that these other partners could do and get all these APIs into their marketplace. And the value that they're providing is that they vetted these other providers of APIs. Because if you're thinking about a marketplace today, you have to think about why should you be a marketplace? What is the value that you're providing over nothing? You know, people just going out and finding APIs and saying, I want to use them. And it, customers, you know, big banks, big uh, corporations don't necessarily want to re um, make their business rely on APIs that are not necessarily going to meet their requirements, right? So somebody needs to validate that this API is good that it's not going to be stealing money from them and doing nothing or, you know, other bad, or even failing if it doesn't handle the scale requirements, right? So the bank is providing this vetting and onboarding, and then they provide an identity service uh, to make sure everybody is, is who they say they are, and now the, the customers uh, in the corporation can come buy services through the marketplace. So this is truly a, a, a very good 
uh, marketplace scenario. And, and I've seen marketplace uh, discussions here at the conferences, and some of them uh, sound like, well, we just want to create a marketplace, but it's just a place where people can put things, but there's no vetting or anything like that. And you're not pro providing a lot of value if you're, if you're not doing something extra to provide uh, resources that, that can validate that the APIs are good. Um, another example in the automotive industry, this is a connected car scenario. So if you are driving uh, this particular manufacturer's car around, they are gathering information uh, about your driving, uh, where you go, how you drive, things like this, which can be valuable to insurance companies, to retailers for the places that you're going. And they're selling the information to third parties. Now, I know GDPR, you know, the, so, so it, you know, it may be with opt-in and it may be, you know, in aggregate and things like that. So, uh, so you know, don't worry that your information is being uh, given without your per permission, but they have the ability to do this and it's a new business model for the company. So these are just some examples uh, in, in the different areas. The domains example that I talked about, you don't see a lot of those written up because people tend not to want to talk about the fact that they can't communicate inside their company uh, already, but we all know that this is the case. Uh, so every company I talk to, when I talk about domains and sharing information across the company, they go, yeah, yeah, we have that problem. Uh, so uh, so uh, there are many, many of those and many of the internal examples. So let me go through, uh, in, in hopefully two minutes or so, uh, a quick recap of the seven biggest mistakes that I'm seeing companies make uh, with their API initiatives. And, and at the bottom, there's a link to the blog that I wrote about this, and I think the video uh, of the, the presentation at uh, API Days Amsterdam may be available on the API Scene uh, website. So the first one that I'm seeing is poor business API identification and confusion between what's an API and what's a service and what's a microservice. And I'm sure this doesn't apply to anybody here in this room, uh, but uh, I have seen this a, a lot out there where um, the, the provider-oriented service kind of mentality sneaks through into the APIs and we don't get that consumer orientation. And I see the terms microservice and API misused all, all the time. So I've written a lot on these topics as well, and it's uh, probably the number one thing that I end up talking to businesses about um, as the first thing to get, get uh, straight in, in your uh, API initiative. The second one is no defined project. And, and, and the issue here is, uh, you know, APIs are a hot thing, right? So, so IT you know, says, okay, we, we have to do an API thing. And, and, and the answer is, what for, right? You know, the question is, what for, right? Why do you need to do an API thing? And they don't have an answer. They, they just know that they need to do an API thing and they better get ready because the business is gonna want one. And, and so without a defined project, in fact, multiple projects, you're probably not going to have a very good API strategy, uh, which is the next one that's going to come up, uh, and, and an API um, implementation that's going to work for you in the long run, right? So the second one is the third one is strategy. Um, what? Why are you doing this? Why do you want to have APIs in your business? And this comes back to the four business drivers that I spoke about at the beginning. If you can't identify, you know, one of those at least, if not more than one, as why you're trying to do APIs, then then why are you doing APIs? What is the the reason that you're investing in this particular area um, if you don't understand what you're trying to get out of it? The, the fourth one, and one that I see a lot, uh, is lack of business involvement. Um, but this is for various reasons. Um, from IT is concerned that if they invite the business in, uh, the business is going to want something now, <laughs> which they will, and IT is not yet ready to deliver it. Um, and also that the business is not going to understand or that we know what the business wants. There's a number of excuses that I hear in this area. Um, the business involvement is critical for a number of reasons, and it deals with some of the other ones that are in this list. Things like poor API identification is because the business is not involved, and IT ends up de defining APIs based on what the IT assets are and not what the business is trying to accomplish. That's one example of, of things that go wrong in this space. Not staffing key roles. I saw this in one of the presentations yesterday, uh, how important it is to have an API product manager, somebody that treats the API as a business asset, as a product that they're coming to market with. Without the business involvement, without a role that's being staffed here, what ends up happening is the business starts to, the IT organization starts to rely on the API developer to do this role. 
and it's just not their job to do it. And so they, have a, they struggle with this and they end up creating an API and nobody's using it because there's no uh, driving force to get it out there into the marketplace. And which comes to the next one, Shh, it's a secret. Uh, we've done everything else fantastic. We've got a great API and we don't tell anybody about it, right? So if you build it, they will come, does not work. Uh, you need to get out there and market your API and let people know that it exists and, and drive people to use it. And then the last one is no metrics or poor metrics. Uh, how do you know if you're being successful if you're not measuring uh, what success means to you and, and, and driving to those metrics? And so this is, again, a whole presentation that I did um, at, at API Days Amsterdam. So what's next? And the answer is digital transformation. Uh, many of you, I saw the session yesterday about uh, um, Adidas and, and you know, what they're doing, and many companies are starting to look at digital transformation. And one of the things that I wrote about at the beginning of this year was the, uh, my view of the status of APIs um, as of January of this year. And one of the things that I, I noticed was that people are talking less about APIs than they used to. Um, it's not like we want to discuss APIs anymore. APIs are now becoming the thing that we just assume is there. And we're going to do things with it, like become uh, a digital business, like you know, become uh, more uh, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud kind of environments. So I started, I changed my title. I was the API business strategist before, and then I became the digital transformation business strategist because I wanted to think about where are people using APIs and what are they going to do with this. And so I started to look into digital transformation a lot. I, I went out and found this um, site that I like called the Agile Elephant uh, that had a great definition for digital transformation. If you Google digital transformation, you will find thousands of definitions for digital transformation. I like this one. Many of them talk about technology and the things that you have to do from a technical perspective to become a digital um, business that's in here. But it also talks then about changing business models. And the thing that I found most important that this definition covers is the change in perspective so that it becomes a customer-oriented, consumer-oriented view versus a provider-oriented view. And if you think about your company, you think about my company, uh, what we do is we make products, we make services, we come to market with the offerings that we have. And we end up talking to our potential customers about the products and services that we have. We should stop doing that. We should talk about what the customer is trying to do and work that backward into it. We do that when we define our products, we just don't do it when we talk to them about our products. And, and so digital transformation and digital business is all about this customer centricity and creating things like the customer wants to buy a car and part of buying the car is getting a bank loan, right? And getting insurance and getting all the other things that they need. And that becomes a holistic thing which we build an ecosystem around to deliver on that customer centric view, right? So that's what digital transformation is all about. And around this, we have some technologies that are happening. Cloud, right? So people are, are moving to cloud, multiple clouds. People are dealing with artificial intelligence. We have APIs that are supporting this. And I'm going to make the case that integration is becoming a problem. So what we've seen, and Gartner has, has spoken about this, is that integration is an obstacle to success for digital transformation. Because if we think about bringing all these different companies together into an ecosystem, and we think about moving assets onto the cloud, and all these assets are now in different places, in different companies, in different locations. How do I make them all work together? And the answer is not just APIs. Even here at the conference, we heard people talking about events. Events is a new way to do things, right? And, and there's more than that. Believe it or not, the biggest integration capability that people are using today is the same one that they've used forever, files. And so people are transferring files between companies, or we need transactional messaging, or we need all these different things. So how do we deal with this when integration is the bottleneck? And the answer is we have to become more agile. We can't rely on a central IT organization in my company to do everything anymore, right? It's just not going to work. And, and so we need to change the people and process, we need to change the architecture, and we need to add, add some technology in here to make this happen. And so we need to do less of this centrally controlled, IT governed to death. Everybody comes to me and there's a bottleneck to get anything done. It's just not going to be in enough to get things done. We need to push things out so that we can have distributed integration. 
And so this is the strategy that we are focused on with our customers. We're talking a lot about this uh, here at the conference and with, uh, with people who come stop by the booth, uh, and we're happy to have these discussions with you. If you think about this architecturally, one of the sessions I enjoyed yesterday, uh, the, one of the speakers said something about he moved, he started on Azure because they gave him some money uh, uh, for his resources there, and then he moved to, um, to uh, uh, Google, and then he moved from Google to Amazon, and he moved, you know, so he kept moving his cloud provider because they were giving him different um, financial incentives to do that. And that's what you should be able to do. You, you need to be able to move between these different clouds. And so whatever your cloud is that you're on, and whatever the thing is that you need to access, we need to provide infrastructure in the, in the way that can do this, and it has to be more agile. And so this modern integration architecture gives you a toolbox that you can bring to bear to put the things that you need where you want them for the financial reasons that you have to do that, and then drive to uh, connect all the things that you want to connect. And that's, that's where this industry is going. So I'm not going to speak about our product uh, in, our, in this session, because I'm already late. Um, but uh, stop by our booth. We can talk to you about what we have in this space. It's called the Cloud Pack for Integration. We're happy to talk to you about that. And I'll leave you with uh, some final thoughts. Everything I've spoken about, to be successful, you need to get executive and business backing. You have to get them on board. Doing this in IT alone is just not going to work. Get your strategy and your goals set. Commit to the roles and responsibilities, and most importantly, after you get all that done, is communicate. Communicate to everybody uh, what they need to know about this. And I'm done. I'm going to leave you with the last uh, couple of slides here of resources. The, one, the link on the top here will get you to everything else, and you'll get this presentation from the conference, and, and they will get you all this. This is page one of three, uh, and, and I'll just you know, quickly skim through the other ones. If you want to take pictures, you can take pictures. But uh, this is, um, we, we, we covered a lot in this category today. Um, and, uh, and then the final page here. So, uh, so that's what I have. Uh, you'll get all these resources. Follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I, uh, every time I publish something, I put it out there on, on those, and you can get anything new that comes out. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm over by a bit. Yeah. Good. So before I'm going to be taking your questions, I have two things for you. Okay. The first one, I got an SMS from Roberto, and it's like, I'm happy to try your cloud if you can offer 100,000. <laughs> open to that? <laughs> no, the second one, seriously, the question that I have, as a digital transformation strategy, let's say, imagine IBM will, be, will not be your employer, but a customer. What will be the biggest area of improvement you see? Give it to me again. So if, if, I, if IBM was my, IBM if, if I was going cost, to IBM, exactly. yeah, as, I mean, yeah. hopefully it's not controversial, but what would be the biggest side of improvement that you see in the You know, company? IBM is itself going through a digital transformation, yeah. and, and the IBM CIO office is our biggest customer uh, of, of our solution, and they do uh, this. And we have actually spoken to them quite a bit about this. IBM has done a lot to make APIs available through a marketplace for internal IBM employees to use. Um, I'm not saying we've gotten 100% there. IBM is a, is a gigantic company, and, and you know, I've spoken to the Red Hat folks that are here just joining us at IBM, and, and you know, IBM is doing its best right now to try to not overwhelm uh, the Red Hat people with the Im immense size of IBM. We in IBM are sometimes overwhelmed with the immense size of IBM, right? So even myself in the area of IBM that I work in, I don't get to... Um, to deal with everybody in IBM, right? It's just 300,000 employees, it's, you know, crazy numbers. Uh, but how, how can I make my things more available to others to see? And I think that's something that we could work on better in IBM from a, a, an asset um, sharing perspective. Yep. Okay. Anybody has any question? Raise your hand, I'll come to you. Hi, it's Chris, uh, Sublight slash 11 Sigma, and thank you for, uh, for the great talk. The question I have was, um, I saw a presentation recently about digital transformation, and how it's actually not about the technology, but about transforming people more, mm. and how people will live in the reality of, of you know, AI, everything being automated, and so, that sort of stuff. So, excuse me, um, how do you think in businesses small, bigger businesses help 
transforming people, maybe CEOs, CDOs, yeah. whoever, to see the opportunity and drive this change. Because often it's, it's not really about the technology, yeah. that about more about people's minds and well, I, you know, yeah. That yeah, kind of I, how 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 can we help oh, it's on the screen. with with that yeah that's 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 a great question I, and it's actually one of the most recent articles that i wrote uh, i wrote uh, an article for a magazine called uh, real time insights called overcoming the three biggest obstacles to digital transformation uh, one of them is dealing with technology the two biggest obstacles are um, exactly what you spoke about, the people perspective of digital transformation and creating an ecosystem. And, and so in that article, um, which is in the links that, that are there, um, I talk about uh, the first article, the first part, I call it perspective, right? So the people perspective and how do you overcome that people perspective from the, it's my product that I want to tell you about to it's that customer orientation. And that starts from the CEO down and the buy-in at that level. And they have to see the opportunity there that this is going to generate more revenue for me than just the people who I can tell about my product. And so you have to come at this from a financial perspective and from an opportunity perspective. And some of the things that I've written about and, and some of the charts that are in this deck for the opportunity for digital transformation can help get the CEO and, and the C-level executives on board. The second obstacle that I talk about is creating an ecosystem, and, and that drives from the first one into realizing that what the customer wants sometimes is just what you offer, but sometimes it's not, and, and, and that sometimes I need more than just what my company offers to provide a solution to the customer, and let's get that mentality in there versus the, I'll tell you about my product, and you, Mr. Customer, have to put together the solution for yourself. On, on what you're trying to do. And then the third obstacle is this integration uh, issue that I spoke about at the end here, right? So the first two are harder. Yeah. 